In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to implement snapping at the end of drag and drop. So as I drag the Ace of Spades down to the target at the bottom right-hand corner of the simulator, when it approaches a certain threshold and I let go, the card will snap to the target. Of course, it's not doing it right now because we have yet to code it. So let's go to the code. Since we want the snapping to happen at the end of the drag drop, that means we need to move to the card's touch end phase. So here, card.addEventListener, touch end. And just before we clear the has touch flag, we're going to create a custom event for the snap area. And that's what this variable is called, snap area. I'll show you. Lines 22 through 27, snap area is that blank card at the bottom right hand corner of the simulator. So now we'll type snap area dot fire event and we'll create a custom event called check distance. Now for the information to send, we'll open and close curly braces and we'll type the following. SRC as a property which will represent the object to test against and that'll be this. Now this refers to card. Then we'll need an X property this.center.x, so the center of the card, and a y property, this.center.y. If you haven't figured out already, the fire event method lets you send custom events. Check distance is not an event that is out of the box in Platino, and that's really actually pretty nice. So we can create event listeners rather effortlessly with the Platino game engine. So I'll scroll up in the code just above the touch start. And I'll create an event listener for check distance. Snap area dot add event listener. And we're listening for the check distance event. And we'll create a function in place. And E is representative of the data that is sent with the check distance event. So we'll create some variables. Var x is equal to this dot center dot x. Remember here that this is representative of snap area. So the center x of the snap area. Y is this.center.y. And we'll create a variable called distance that we'll fill in in a moment. And then a threshold. And the threshold is the number of pixels distance that is required to be breached in order for the card to snap to the snap area. That'll be 50. So now let's complete the distance variable here. And here we're going to check the distance between the cards, center x, and the snap areas, center x. So we'll use the distance formula. So that is the square root of the following. And I'm going to break this up on lines since we don't have a lot of room. So notice that the parentheses are split. It is the square root of the current x of the snap area minus the x of the card, which is e.x here. And it's that squared. Instead of using the math um, pow, I'm going to just multiply it twice. So the square of the x of the snap area minus the card's x plus the same thing but for the y's. So I'll change all my x's to y's. And just to be safe, I'm then going to group again these expressions into one big parentheses. Okay, so x minus ex squared, which is this portion, y minus ey squared. And then it's the square root of that. So beneath threshold, we'll perform a conditional check. If the distance is less than or equal to the threshold, then we can snap the card. E.SRC.Center equals, open and close curly braces, and remember that the SRC property of the object is the card. We wouldn't want to directly reference the card if we could totally avoid it, which is why we sent it as a reference. So the x is this.center.x, and the y is this.center.y. And remember that this, in this context, is snap area. So basically, we're setting the center point of the card 
to the center point of the snap area. And that's it. We can now run this in the simulator. We'll drag the card towards the snap area. I'll let go. It's not within the threshold. A little more, let go. A little more, let go. And it snaps. Now I'll try to drag it out, let go, it snaps. And so we'll go back to the code. Let's change the threshold to something really large, like 150. So now if the card's within 150 pixels of the snap area, it'll snap. Run it again in the simulator. And so I'll drag it and let go. And let me get within 150 pixels. There we go. And there's a slight pause. I suspect that's because of the screen recording software. When I tested this out earlier, it was running pretty fast. On touch end, we were able to implement a custom check distance event for the snap area. You can also imagine how you would implement maybe another kind of uh, a custom event on touch move so that you were constantly checking the distance and maybe performing some sort of uh, effects on the touch area such as a highlighting in blue or something like that. Uh, we won't do that now, but it does give you a sense of how that is accomplished here within this particular lesson.